fun. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a piece written about the, uh, the, the Millstone Bakery behind Just us. down the street yeah, from where we are tonight right. at the AGN. Hi, um, we're inside Northumberland Art Gallery in Coburg. My name is Saskia Tompkins. I'm David Newland. And it's uh, really, really great to be here. You and I have both had the pleasure of being guests at the AGN Spotlight Series in the past. Yeah. And it's an absolute honor and privilege to be here hosting this very special version of the Spotlight Series. Obviously, with everything that's been going on, we weren't able to do this year's annual extravaganza the usual way, so not here we are, doing in, it this way. In, in the same room, not with, a, not with an audience. We're going to begin by speaking about the land that we're on tonight. We are on the traditional territory of the Mississauga Anishinaabe people, including our neighbours up at Hiawatha First Nation, Curve Lake First Nation, and Alderville First Nation. I had the pleasure of launching the Spotlight series right in this room two years ago, and since then it's brought many people to this place that wouldn't have visited it, and it has managed to raise $10,000 for child education. I think we can agree that supporting the arts and arts education has never been more important than it is right here, right now. Yes, I think we can agree on that. And another thing about this uh, this art gallery is that they've got over a thousand, a thousand pieces, pieces of work of art. Yeah. From, from Canadian artists and international. It's incredible. It is incredible. Yeah. I, f yeah, I, f I feel so fortunate to have this gallery here in this area and also to have people who support the arts so much and the community, like uh, Linda Kay, who came in, she came in to talk to the executive director of the art gallery, Alinda Casmiro. Take a look. Linda, it's really lovely to be sitting in here at the art gallery of Northumberland and seeing each other face to face. I know, welcome, welcome to the gallery. It's lovely to see you outside of Zoom. That's right, it's been, uh, we've had a couple of Zoom interviews over the past uh, few months, but you know, I'm here today sort of to talk about, you know, what's been happening with the gallery and how you've been adjusting over these last few months. So we've welcomed about 200 people to the gallery since we reopened, uh, which is a true testament to the community's uh, engagement with, with our, our exhibitions and our shows here at the gallery. And it's, it's changed. There's, it certainly feels different, um, but it's okay. Uh, you know, we're at capacity at 25 people, um, so we're modifying how we do things, but it's, it's good. We've certainly partnered with the town of Coburg to help us get through uh, this period. Uh, they've been great at sharing resources and uh, helping us navigate uh, through the uh, COVID uh, pandemic compliance. We want the ability to offer our community a safe environment um, and allow them to spend some time in, in a beautiful space. You have a wonderful digital presence out in the community through the, your social media, which keeps people pretty well informed, but you're also looking at how you will move forward with a digital spotlight series. We have um, began to take the measures to go digital, uh, and with our community really engaging on those platforms, uh, we know it'll be a continued success. That's one thing the community, everybody has gotten into is a lot more digital, so they're, they're getting used to that. So well, we're getting better at it too, mm -hmm. uh, right? I think uh, developing our uh, programs that are tied into what our mandate is and, you know, thinking about things from a different perspective. Uh, until we try, we won't know. And you know what, it's not, digital is not necessarily second best. Our, our reach has become broader um, and we're listening to what the community is interested in. So of course supporting the arts is so important and getting that community support and people to give to the arts is important and coming up is of course Giving Tuesday Orlinda and you're very lucky to have a matching donor so let's talk about that. We have a donor who has generously kick-started uh, our Giving Tuesday campaign uh, in the amount of $2,500. With a matching gift we will be able to produce the Art in the Box uh, program and there will be uh, three choices in those boxes that, that you will be able to access. 
Uh, and the activities in the art in the art in the box are uh, fun, creative, inspiring. Well, hopefully people will respond. I know our community has been very generous, and certainly people want to support locally. So I'm sure you will see that support come through in spades on Giving Tuesday. Yeah, and you know, as a gallery, we're here to support them as well. And I think that when you have the uh, relationship with your community and can engage them, um, they benefit in some well, Linda, thanks very much for a few minutes oh. to just give an update on what's happening. With Thank you. Gallery. Right during this moment, if you donate to AGN, uh, donations up to $2,500 in total will be matched by the anonymous donor, which is incredible. That's an amazing uh, thing to happen. Yeah, it's, it's really cool, and it's sort of symbolic of how things like this get supported, right? It's not just someone working behind a desk, it's not just someone painting paintings, there's an entire ecosystem around support for the arts. Uh, there are volunteers, there are boards of directors, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we have a segment coming up here that sort of speaks to that. We have Zainab Vergi, mm -hmm. who is from the Ontario Association of Art Galleries. Uh, a writer, an artist, a really dynamic force. She's just contributed to a UNESCO report on cultural diversity. And Amazing. she it was recently named a Governor General's Award winner for outstanding contributions to the arts. So wow. an example of the kind of person that's necessary to drive the arts in our communities. Extraordinary. Public art galleries are incredibly important to the visual arts sector. Do you know that for every dollar invested in the art gallery, there's a four dollar return? And what we find is that pre-COVID, public art galleries had a working capital ratio of less than one percent. And for a healthy organization, you need a working capital ratio from seven to nine percent. So you can see how precarious the galleries were already pre-COVID. The regional and rural galleries have been impacted the hardest. The arts was called upon, you know, to, to engage community, right? Uh, to show your work, show performing arts, show your collection, um, engage with the community in any way that we could. And, and it's interesting because in the point of COVID, we could see how central art is to society. And now we have access and opportunity to engage with also a digital community who is interested in the work that we do. And the galleries are not ready. Galleries have not been able to digitize their collections. We have not been able to build digital infrastructure robustly. And OAG has been listening to its membership. We have been doing advocacy on behalf of the membership. You know, we, we've put in a three-pronged um, approach to government. Uh, one is for resilience, one is for re uh, reopening, and one is the digital. And one of the pathways forward, I think, is really linking to the local community that each region, each gallery has, but it's also to the digital community. I think that the Art Gallery of Northumberland can be the model gallery for the province and for this country in what it decides to do. Will we understand deeply how to engage with indigenous communities? Will we understand, will we be able to take the challenge and work with people of color and other artists and other communities and bring them home? We have the opportunity to bring those communities here as much as we do to take our community to them. And I think the Art Gallery of Northumberland, with its fantastic history, its amazing collection, has a real opportunity to be the model gallery that we can all follow. Well, I just loved what Zainab said about artists being called upon. I mean, you and I are both performers and it's such a difficult time right now. We've, we've all lost our gigs, and yet we are being called upon more than ever. The arts is what gives people hope. The arts is what helps people rededicate themselves to sort of meaning and feeling in their lives and gives them emotional support. And um, we're here surrounded uh, by the 42nd annual juried ex exhibition in this space, which is an example just of the kind of outbringing of, of, of talent People are coming to see the work because they want to connect at a time like this. And um, since we're both musicians and we like to play together, 
I've got a song that I think speaks to the, the power and the importance and the struggle of the artist. And uh, this is the, the wonderful Don McLean song, oh, Vincent, song. Starry, Starry Night. Starry, starry night Paint your palette blue and gray Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul Shadows on the hills Sketch the trees and the daffodils Catch the breeze and the winter chill In colors on the snowy linen land And now I understand What you tried to say to me And how you suffered for your sanity And how you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now Starry, starry night Flaming flowers that brightly blaze Swirling clouds of violet haze Reflecting Vincent's eyes of china blue Colors change in hue Morning fields of amber grain, weathered faces lined with pain, soothed beneath the artist's loving hand. And now I understand what you tried to say to me, and how you suffered for your sanity. I tried to set them free They would not listen They did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now hung in empty halls Frameless heads on nameless walls With eyes that watch the world and can't forget Like the strangers that you met Ragged men in ragged clothes Silver thorn of bloody rose Crushed and broken on the virgin snow And now I think I know What you tried to say to me How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen, they're not listening still Perhaps they never will I just love to hear you play. Thank you so much. I love to play with you, David. It's, it's great. It fills my soul. Yeah, we really miss those gigs. <laughs> we really miss those gigs. This is good. This is good. But there are people who are making sense of how to reach out at this time and how to connect to an audience and that sort of thing, aren't there's there? There's a, a east of the county. There's this amazing place called West Bend. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's an old barn. I don't know if you've been there, but it's fantastic. And it's run by Brian Finley and his wife, Donna Bennett, who are both incredible musicians. Uh, Donna is a, is a wonderful, wonderful um, opera singer. 
and, and Brian is a really amazing pianist and harpsichord player and they're both very passionate and they bring all these arts into their area of the county. Phenomenal contribution, eh? Oh, yeah. it's incredible. And um, what they found uh, during COVID, they found a new pathway through. Um, and in fact, he got to interview. Brian was interviewed. So uh, let's watch the video. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. One of our big strategic uh, goals was to take West Bend out of its garden and share it with the rest of the world. And so this, all these pieces kind of came together for us with this pandemic. And that this was an opportunity to explore that, how we actually get what we do, the West Bend experience uh, of uh, beautiful music making, we're coming together through music and getting that out online. So we developed this program, Sunshine Ahead, which has uh, basically four elements to it. There are musical moments, which were meant to soothe. There are uh, podcasts, which are meant to engage and to educate. There were digital concerts at the barn, which is a very exciting uh, initiative for us here, which is a transformation of the concert at the barn idea into an online forum. Uh, there were th activities for kids as well, too. Uh, and it became this, this playground of amazing potential. And instead of performing for 400 people in this space, to, to be able to take our projects and our experience to thousands of people internationally, globally, to share our community, to share our setting, to share our music making and our aesthetic with a huge audience was absolutely a dazzling opportunity. But every now and then, to think of the things that we are letting go and that we have let go is, is very uh, kind of heartbreaking. Uh, but we try not to dwell on that too much because the new opportunities are so fantastic. And that's one thing that Art Gallery of Northumberland has done exceptionally well, I think, is that it feels to me like the doors there are wide open and all these fascinating things keep coming out. The arts in a rural setting are particularly exciting because the arts have this ability to connect in a whole different way than they do in, say, urban centers. In a rural setting, especially something like West Bend, you open up to the outside world and you include that in the whole experience of the art, of the art aesthetic. So it becomes part of what's going on. It becomes uh, integral to the, to the whole experience and therefore becomes part of the art and therefore becomes totally unique and totally wonderful because the art is about, is about our world. The art gallery is a huge asset to the entire county and beyond, I should say, as well, too. I mean, it is a, it's one of those defining features. It's a place where things come together to show what the community is all about. And this whole idea of reach is just phenomenal. You know, there are no walls to the internet. It's fantastic. But there's a huge financial challenge. There's a huge learning curve for all of us to figure out how to do this. Uh, we need time, we need, uh, we need help understanding how best to do it, we need help figuring out how to monetize it because there's so much free content online, how you actually make money from it. Uh, these, are, these are huge business challenges for the organizations uh, and we're all facing this. And I think the, the best thing people can do is to support us through this transition. And people are, and thank God for that because I, we, would, we wouldn't be able to continue if, if not. We can't do it alone, and we don't want to do it alone. Wow, Brian is really letting nothing stop him, right? Like, this, this is an opportunity. Let's look at digital uh, means to reach audiences. Let's expand our notion of what an audience is and how we get to them and see everything in the positive. And really, what a driving force in the community. Absolutely, we're so fortunate to have them. And it's an inspiration, I think, for all of us, to, that it, there is a positive aspect to, to our, our profession disappearing through COVID. It's not actually disappearing, we can find it. It's about that. figuring it out and, and the way forward. And, and those drivers, I mean, we, we're really, really lucky to have so many people who embrace the arts at so many different levels and in so many different ways. Something that's always been important to me since moving to Coburg is that this is a town with a poet laureate. It's another example of someone who has their uh, energy going out into the community mm -hmm. to the fullest to develop the arts and uh, I'm really pleased that we're going to hear from Jessica in this moment. 
Uh, the arts are a wonderful way to build community, to express what it means to be human, uh, to connect to each other and to say this is who I am, this is who you are. So whether you are creating something or you're receiving it as an audience member, it is an opportunity for us to connect and to belong. So since the pandemic has come in, I've really noticed that the writers and the artists are still doing their thing online. There's a lot of wonderful readings. I've seen some wonderful uh, virtual exhibits come up throughout the community. And my heart goes out to all our performing artists out there, our singers, our dancers, our musicians, our theater uh, creators. Uh, this has been especially hard because they're missing their audiences. We're just so lucky to have so much talent in our community and I love that the Spotlight series is doing such good work in shining a light on those talented people so that we can get to know them better. It goes beyond just here's my work. It's this is who I am and this is my relationship with it and how it's developed over time. So it's a really unique way to be able to look at somebody who is creating and how they bring their work to the community. What I find is really special about having a permanent collection in an area like this is that it changes as we change, it grows as we grow because every time we grow and change, how we look at a piece of art now, post mid-pandemic is very different than how we would have looked at a piece a year ago. I think that we're going to connect to, I know I am, I'm connecting more to, um, to feeling in pieces than I did before because I'm noticing more because my life is slower and that's helped it to, to, to wake things up. So being able to have a regional gallery where we know it's a space that naturally gives itself uh, permission to distance, <laughs> to, to, to move through it in a safe way and to be able to explore works that have been selected over time especially for our community as part of that collection is really really quite spectacular it is more important than ever to be aware of the arts to connect to the arts and for us to explore our own individual creativity I think because there is so much uncertainty in the world um, we have to look to find meaning and where do we find meaning since the beginning of time, we find meaning through the arts. We find it through poetry, we find it through literature, painting, sculpture, dance, music. And it goes beyond what we can consciously think. And so the arts helps us to make sense of, to understand, and to work through complex problems. And so, you know, even if you just put on a piece of music and you sit and you listen to it, or you, you, you take some time to go and really look and notice a painting, it is going to uh, make you feel more present it is going to lower your heart rate you're going to start breathing a little bit differently your well-being is going to improve and there are going to be uh, connections and communications happening that are beyond what we're thinking about that really help us to heal from everything that's been going on and to, to, to express some of the discomfort and the, the challenges that have come through this time Oh, she was incredible, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, you have to love Jessica's enthusiasm and just her emotion and her core belief in, in the arts and in how it matters to people and how it matters to community. Oh, yeah, and it's totally addictive. And what she's saying and, and how she expresses it is, is so believable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's, I think it's what we're all feeling right now. It's, it's great to know that the Spotlight series continues. Mm -hmm. um, as, as before, only season three will be uh, carefully created, curated little documentaries, mini docs about uh, artists in the community, uh, which will you know, have the kind of outreach that we've, we've had tonight, mm -hmm. actually going out there uh, to get people in their homes. And if people are interested in being a part of that, they can contact the gallery as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, through their website. Um, yeah, and also on the website, artgalleryofnorthumberland.com you can make your Giving Tuesday donation so it's between now and December 1st you got to get that donation in there in order to have it matched by our, our generous anonymous donor which is amazing so remember if you donate five dollars they will get ten dollars yeah and grade. if you donate 50 they get a hundred we're so fortunate to have had this opportunity it's lovely to work with you again we've we've done so many gigs together and we've missed doing that we miss all of you out there we do. Uh, it's a treat to be back in this space again in, in this space yes. yeah the space of making and creating and um, thanks to everybody who had a hand in, in putting the show together we hope you've enjoyed it watching from home 
I took the opportunity to get inspired. To be honest, it's been difficult to find inspiration in, in the present moment. And um, this opportunity lit me up. And so um, I actually wrote a new song, and you're going to help me I'll, sing it. I, well, I'll play. I'm play it, anyway. yeah. Uh, you're going to help me <laughs> sing by you playing. You wrote a song about an art gallery. I wrote a song about, about the gallery, yeah. about not just this gallery, but the gallery in everyone's lives, really, and, and what you can find there. And um, thanks, everybody, for being with us tonight. We're going to go out on this one. I'm David Newland. She is the wonderful Saskia Tompkins. Thank you. See you around. Something so you need to make your imagination run wild. So you know you are creation's child. in all you see in the gallery was the life breathed into clay just to touch your soul this way and these visions The deepest depths, the highest heights. And they call your heart to be enfolded. Art.